Okay, so in this video we're just going to make a quick test mod so that we can uh, verify our ability to edit the game. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to hop over into example mod, uh, our project. Um, we're going to extend the ETG module um, class and uh, extending the ETG module class requires that we have three methods inside of our class so we can go to quick actions here and implement abstract class um, it's going to generate three methods we're gonna have exit init and start um, kind of out of order here we're gonna do init exit start is the actual correct order that they execute in um, init is going to occur while the, the mod the gungeon uh, system is booting up start is going to occur after it's done and the game kind of starts booting up itself and then exit is going to occur once the game quits so in our init method I don't usually do much in our start method is where I usually do most of my work and what we're going to do is just going to we're just going to uh, have the console write um, test mod initialized and uh, that's all we're going to do. So we're just going to check to see that this mod gets loaded by printing out this line. We're going to go up here to build, build solution, and hopefully we'll have a build succeeded. Um, if not, then you probably have something wrong with your uh, references. You can go back to the last video and watch that one over again. Um, and now we're going to go over here to our Visual Studio um, folder with all of our projects. So we're gonna to go to projects. Uh, we're gonna to go to the name of our project, which was example mod. Um, we're gonna open up this example mod folder, open up this bin folder, open up debug, and then grab this example mod.dll. So we're gonna copy that. Um, we're gonna move over here to our mods folder. And in here we're gonna create, or the, yeah, the mods fold folder is inside of our enter the gungeon folder. Um, it should be, um, right here. If it isn't, then you can run the game once with enter the, with mod the gungeon installed and it will generate this folder automatically. Um, or you can just create it yourself. Uh, so we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it example mod. And inside of it, we're going to put our DLL. And also, we're going to put a new text document. And we're going to call this text document metadata.txt. Um, this is going to be how gungeon recognizes your mod. Um, so, or mod the gungeon recognizes your mod. So what we need to do is we need to have um, a line called name and we will call it, uh, we will enter example mod. I'm not sure if spaces are okay, uh, so I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, we need DLL and that will uh, be the name of the DLL we just dropped in our file. And then we need um, depends. And I don't really know what this does, but you can just put base.0.2. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> it works and it doesn't run without it. So actually, I'm going to put the space here. I'm pretty sure that the spaces are allowed. So, OK, so we'll save that. We'll close it. We'll open up into the Gungeon with mod the Gungeon installed. And then we will see if our mod got loaded. Um, there's actually a really good chance that it won't because I forgot to delete the mods.txt, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so if I press F1, then you can see up here it says enabled mods and it says example mod. That means that our mod got loaded. Um, I did forget to um, erase this file, so there's going to be a file inside your mods folder probably um, called mods.txt. You want to delete this file pretty much every time you install a new mod because um, it like whitelists mods, but it doesn't get updated if it already exists. Um, so you want to delete it before you run the game with a new mod. So if yours didn't, if yours says disabled in the bottom left down here when you press F1, um, then that means that you probably just need to just delete mods.txt or there's an error in your code and it won't compile. Um, okay, so we'll just pick the robot here, I guess. And if we press the console key, which is the tilde slash the backwards apostrophe key. Also, I think you can press F4 or slash. No, not F4, F3. Um, ooh, 
Ooh, F3 is ugly. Okay, don't do that. Just do the tilde one. <laughs> Maybe it's F2? Let me see. Yeah, F2. Okay, so it's F2, the tilde key, or the forward slash button. Um, and that'll open up the console. And now we see test mod dash initialize. And that means that our mod was loaded. So that's fantastic. And that means that we can actually start uh, writing some code. Um, I guess in this video, we can do a quick little test mod. Um, so what we can do is we can add a command to the console using etg mod console dot uh, commands dot add unit and the parameters that this takes is a string and an action I think so what we can do is we can write that what the command is going to be in the console so we'll do a mod test or something and what we will do is we'll assign this to an action or a method inside of our class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a public void called mod test, and it has to take a string array, we'll call it args. So we'll make this method. We'll pass that method as our second parameter without any um, parentheses, so no parentheses there, just the name of the, the uh, method. Um, you can make this any method in any class. So if you had a second class called test module two, you could do test module two dot mod test. Uh, you might be able to put an object there. I don't know. I think it has to be a static reference. Well, probably not. Don't worry about it. Um, any, in any case, we're just gonna do one in our class. So we're gonna call it mod test. We're gonna call this one. And then um, what we will do is we'll just get a reference to the player object by doing uh, player controller, we'll, we'll get the player controller inside of player controller object, we'll call it player. We'll set it equal to game manager dot instance dot primary player, primary player, and we'll check to see if it's null because that happens sometimes. If, if the care, if the, if whoever's playing the game hasn't actually picked a character yet, this will return null. So if player is not equal to null, uh, we will do something and if they are null we can just etg mod console dot log um, player not found please choose a character all right so what we'll do is we'll say if they type this command we're gonna change the stat uh, we'll say this the speed stat on the player to like five times as fast as they usually are. So what we can do is we can say player stats dot stat type dot speed or movement speed uh, or here about this we'll say player stats dot stat type uh, speed stat is equal to that. So we'll store that we'll store this inside of this variable speed stat. And then we can say player dot stats dot set base stat value. We'll pass in speed stat as the value that we want to um, modify and then we will enter a value and a player controller which will just be the player. Um, so we'll say uh, let's do five for five times speed and then we will pass the player in. Okay so this should work now if we type in mod test in the console then we should be able to uh, increase our speed times five. So we're gonna do Control Shift B to build, or you can press Build and then Build Solution. It takes a long time. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, we're just gonna press Control Shift B, and then we will go over to our debug folder. We'll grab this mod.dll again. Go back into Example Mod, and we will replace the file in the destination. Um, these files were automatically generated when the game ran. You can just leave them there. They don't hurt, hurt anybody and this relink cache is also generated by the game. Um, okay, so we don't need to delete mods.txt because we haven't installed any new mods. We can just run into the Gungeon and hopefully our mod will still be enabled. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to boot up with mod the Gungeon installed because it has to hook a bunch of methods and things. All right, so if we open our console, test mod initialize, that's a good sign. Um, now we should be able to type in uh, our mod test, right? Uh, yeah, so um, if we type in 
mod and then tab, it'll autocomplete for our um, command. If we hit that, it'll say player not found, please choose a character, just like we wanted it to. We'll pick the hunter, we'll do mod test, and now, oh, we're actually moving much slower. Okay, so the base movement speed value is actually 7, so by setting it to 5, we're actually decreasing our speed. Um, how about uh, we go back, we'll just do it real quick, we'll set it to like 20, we'll build, debug, example mod, we'll copy that into our example mod folder again, replace that file, run to the gungeon, this is something you're going to have to get used to, is just building, copy pasting, running gungeon, and then building again, that's just a, the life cycle of the mod development process at the moment. Um, then we will go into the game, grab the robot, I guess, um, and we'll type, type mod test. And now we should moving, be moving significantly faster. That's way too fast. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. That's how you make mods in Gungeon. Um, and a lot of what I've learned. Ooh, all right, it's going to let us quite loud. So um, yeah, a lot of the stuff um, you're gonna have to just kind of mess around with it um, to figure out what does what, like finding out that the game manager instance is stored inside of the player or the player controller object is stored inside of the game manager instance uh, object, and knowing about the player stats dot stat type class and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of hard. You kind of just have to use the power of Visual Studio Autocomplete to see what all the methods and actions are that you can add to, um, and uh, just kind of fiddle around with it. No one really knows everything about modding and Gungeon, Gungeon right now, so um, it's kind of a unexplored territory. But you can do a lot with it um, if you can figure it out. So yeah, that's going to end it here for this video, and then uh, I guess we'll go more in depth into some other modding techniques that we can use um, to make things easier for ourselves uh, in the next video.